Okay, now what I want to do is I want to show you how you can actually modify your brushes. All right, doing all the repair work that I showed you in the previous uh, movies is fine and dandy, and what we're using there were round brushes. All right, but what I think would be better is if you actually had a brush that was not necessarily round. All right, and, and that'll help out with your retouching and all that kind of stuff. But before I get into showing you actually how to modify your brushes, I think it's important to explain to you uh, how they work and, and what the brushes are all about and everything. So to that end, I've got a brush. I've got my paintbrush selected. I got black as my paint that I'm going to put down. I have my opacity at 100%. I have my flow at 100%. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to increase and decrease your brushes uh, on the fly so you don't have to leave your work area to go back over and change the value only to come back into your work area again. All right, so in order to change your brush sizes, all right, and starting right now, I'm at a 30 pixel diameter brush. If I want to increase my brush sizes, what I do is I tap the right bracket key and I'm going up in increments of five pixels. All right. So if I'm at a brush diameter of 10 and I hit the right bracket key once, I go five and I keep going in increments of five until I hit 50. Once I hit 50, I'm going in increments of 10. Once I hit 100, I'm going in increments of 25. Once I hit 200, I'm going in increments of 50. All right. And now I'm just going to hold it down until I get back down into 10. And then when I'm in the 10 and I go into the single digits, I'm just going down or up, doesn't matter, up or down, in singles. All right, perfect. All right, so here we go. We've got that going on. And if you remember from the preferences uh, video way back in the beginning, I had also mentioned that there was something about brushes and brush strokes and all that kind of fun stuff. And if I was to hold down the caps lock, I'd get a precision cursor. And if I un do the caps lock, then I'm back with my normal brush. So the reason why I bring that to your attention is if you get into Photoshop and you want to start doing some painting of some nature and you realize that your brush is looking like a little crosshair, all right, one of two things are going on. You've either zoomed in, zoomed out so far that you've got a 2,500 pixel diameter brush and all you're seeing is the center crosshair, but more than likely I want you just to go and Set your eyes on your keyboard and see whether or not the caps lock has been turned on. A lot of times people will be working in other applications, and I'll give you an example, Microsoft Word, where you're typing, blah, 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 and you had the caps lock on for whatever that you were typing your text with and all that kind of stuff. You forget that you had that turned on. You come back into Photoshop, you start painting, and you know the first thing that people say is, why is my cursor like this? I'd say, take a look at, and they go, oh, good Lord, yes, you're right. Okay, fair enough. So now we've got that going on. So we know that I can increase and decrease based on uh, hitting that left or right bracket key. Now, when it comes to changing the hardness of your brush, all right, you can use the same keys, but you have to add the shift key into that. So if I have the shift key selected, you saw previously that I was at 0% hardness. If I have the shift key uh, held down and I tap the right bracket, which is now technically a brace, curly brace, and I've increased the size. You saw the diameter of the brush increase, but what basically was happening was I went from 0% hardness to 25. And if I was to, you know, shift tap the right bracket key again, I'd go to 50, 75, and 100. All right. Now, one thing I want you to pay attention to is the size of this dark circle brush outline thing that you see on the screen. If I increase the hardness, it looks like my brush is getting larger. And if I decrease it, it looks like the brush is getting smaller. Now, the brush itself is not getting smaller, but what is changing in proportion to the size of the brush based on the softness of the edge of the brush where the majority of the density of the paint is coming out of the brush, that's what's being indicated by the diameter circle here, enlarging or reducing based on the hardness softness. Wow. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come over here and click. And let me just do this and make sure that I'm back down at the total soft thing. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to give a click. And there we go. Now that's an 80 pixel diameter brush and it's not very big. So I think I'm going to have to make things bigger. And this is acting a little bit weird. Why is that going on? I don't know, but we'll see. There you go. That's looking a little bit better. Is this set up as a, uh, uh, let's see. 
Oh, there you go. That's why I've got brush dynamics turned on. Well, I guess it's a good thing it was turned on so you can actually see what's going on. All right, take a look at my brush. I'm using a Wacom tablet. All right, Wacom tablets are pressure sensitive and all this kind of stuff. And with shape dynamics turned on, I get this pressure sensitive thing. So as I start to come in, you can see that my strokes are not the same at the end as they are in the middle. All right, that's why when I first click, I get that little guy just like this. All right, and if I was to click and hold and paint, then it would, you know, as the pressure is on, then you get it. You see how I pulled away from the canvas, and that's what I end up with there. If I turn that off, then my brush is going to behave in the manner that I was expecting it to. All right, so now that I have that turned off, I'm going to turn off smoothing as well, and I want my brushes just to be normal. All right. Not 100% sure why that uh, was, but possibly I clicked on one of the presets and there we go. So I'm just going to fill my canvas again with that. I have my brush set. I have an 80 pixel diameter. I'm going to go up to 100 just so I'm working with even numbers here. All right. So here we go. I've got a 100 pixel diameter brush, totally soft edged. I'm going to give it a click. There you go. All right. Here is see the diameter, the ring of the brush based on the density of the paint that went in. All right, so now if I was to hold down the shift key and tap the right bracket key, you saw the size of my brush ring here got larger. And if I uh, click once, you can see that this is 25% softness. This is 100% softness. All right, and then I'm just going to continue doing this so you can actually see the difference between the different hardness values. All right, 0, 25, 50, 75, the last one. 100 and there you go all right that's what all this brush softness and hardness stuff is all about okay all right now the next thing i want to talk to you about and i'm just going to you know one two three four five you know and get down and change this now the opacity all right the opacity is just how dense your paint is coming out at right now it's 100 percent. and when i have a brush based tool selected if i want to change the opacity to say 50 percent, all i have to do is hit the number five key on my keyboard and it changes the opacity to 50 percent. and if i was to paint something you can see it's coming in at that density if i want to be at 20 percent, i hit the two key and i'm going to paint in with a lighter shade of gray if i want to have 80 percent then I click on the number eight and I'm at 80%. And if I want to go back to 100%, I hit the zero key and now I'm painting with pure black. All right, that is the way we can change the density of our brush on the fly. If I wanted to have 44, just type 44 really, really fast. And now that's 44% density of gray or, or opacity of gray or black or whatever you want to call it. All right, now the flow that is how the paint actually comes out of the end of the brush. So I'm going to set that back up to 100%. I'm going to fill the canvas uh, with white again. And with this guy sitting here at the flow, all right, which is how fast the paint is coming out. So I'm kind of painting like this at 100%. And then I'm going to put it down to 30%. All right, now let's see what's happening if I just kind of paint there. You see how it's flowing out at a lesser rate? It's 100% opacity, but the flow is coming out less. So in other words, it's not coming out as strong. All right, now I'm going to set that back up to 80%, and I'm just going to click and drag in the same fashion. All right, there you go. And now I'm going to set it to 20%, and I'm going to click and drag, and you can see how it's coming out that way. And if you're wondering how I'm changing my flow by tapping the 2, the 8, the 7, the 5, and all that kind of stuff is I'm just holding down the shift key. I'm holding down the shift key. I hit the 5. I'm at 50%. I hold down the shift key, hit the 0, I'm back up to 100%. All right, so that's what the flow is, how it's flowing out of the pen at a constant rate. All right, so now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on this guy here, which is the airbrush. And the airbrush is really, really cool. I don't generally use it as a photographer. I won't want to use this very often. At least I haven't found any uses for it. But who knows, maybe in the future, I'll give it a shot and see if I can actually get it to work for my purposes. All right. But generally, uh, for graphic artists, they love this thing. All right. What it means is the longer I hold down, the more 
stuff comes out of the end. Think of it like your garden hose and you're, you're spraying your driveway as an example, right, in a summer day and all that kind of stuff. And you can just see the amount coming out and the more that you put down, the more it spreads out and all that kind of stuff. So here we go. I'm just going to click and hold and watch the way it fills out. You see how that works? I can just go down like this and it's a normal click like I did the first time. If I click and hold, you can see how more of this ink is coming out. All right, absolutely amazing. Make sure you turn it off if you play with it and turn it on and all that kind of stuff. All right, so now the other thing that I wanted to show you was, and I'm just gonna fill the background again with that, is this stuff over here. So I've got a 100 pixel diameter, totally soft edged paintbrush sitting right here. And what I wanna do is I wanna show you how you can modify your brushes. You can modify your brushes by coming down and playing with all these kind of things. Good Lord, you know, that would take a whole module or whole course just learning how to play with the brushes and all the different possibilities you can come up with. So what I want to do is just kind of get you going in this kind of stuff is I want to change the roundness of my brush. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change the roundness of my brush to 60%. Now you can see I'm painting with an oval shape. And what I want to do is I want to change the angle that this is coming in on because right now my brush is just coming like that. So if I just come over here and if I type in 45 degrees, now I have a 45 degree oblong shape brush. All right, and this kind of a brush might be a better brush for you to use when you're doing some of your retouching and repairing. All right, so now if I really like this brush and I want to keep it and everything else, what I can do now is come back over to here, up in the upper left-hand corner where we see the icon of the tool being used and the brush diameter and all that kind of stuff in here. There's this little create new preset icon right there. So I can click on that guy and I'm going to get this dialog box. And it's going to say soft elliptical 100 because that's what it is. It's a soft elliptical 100 brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out and I'm just going to space hyphen space. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in 45 degrees and I'm going to just go 60% round. Something along those lines, just so I have an idea what it is. And there you go. Capture brush size in preset. So that means that it will be 100 pixel diameter right off the bat. All right, there you go, got it, done. So now if I scroll down here, you can see that I have one at 100 pixel diameter. All right, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna turn this off and then I'm just going to put in here uh, uh, no brush size, I don't know. No brush size in preset, come in here and do that. And now I guess I can actually have whatever I wanted to have, whatever brush I had selected. See, these are presets that are in here and they've got predetermined sizes. But now I can come in and grab that and it's whatever I had this at as opposed to being absolutely, absolutely 100 as it was before. All right. Thanks a lot. See you soon.